Now I wanna show you how easy it is to build. So we're gonna go over to this blank track here and I'm gonna drag the ONTAP 8x4 All On Bank by Abletoots. Hey, my name's Devin. I'm a keys player and an avid Ableton user. And that was a little selection of some patches that I have for an ABBA cover band uh, that I recently joined with some friends. Um, and the whole thing about this set and kind of my philosophy with Ableton and playing keys is that I don't want to look at my computer at all during a show. Uh, in fact, I want it to be like kind of safely tucked away if possible. Now there are obviously exceptions, like if I'm running tracks, if I need to see like line by line what's going on in a show, but if I'm just queuing up some patches, I like to not even think about my computer and just have it all at my fingertips, similar to a Nord or some sort of like hardware board. Um, but in this case, it's something that I've custom programmed to fit kind of my needs and you get the benefits of a lightweight setup and the quality sound that comes from your favorite VSTs and you can do it all in Ableton. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on under the hood. When I play this set live, um, I'm only using this single track here, ABBA Patches. All of this stuff is just for this video. So within ABBA Patches, we have a couple of custom Max for Live devices that I've built. This one we don't need to get into for this video. I have a separate video about it. It's pretty relevant for keys players, so you can check that out if you're curious about um, passing uh, modulation and expression data without mapping it. And then this one is kind of the crux of this nested patch setup that I use. It's called ONTAP. And you'll see that one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven all light up based on the corresponding buttons that I've mapped. So you can see here, seven buttons mapped. And what that does is it changes the bank. All right, so based on which bank I tap and how many times I tap it, I can access up to 28 sounds. That's seven times four. Now I'm only using three taps max and I don't even have all those slots filled. But let me just give you a quick rundown of the sounds. One tap, DX, use the cutoff knob here to modulate the cutoff on the pad. Uh, two taps, gives me xylophone. And three taps, gives me the spooky synth that follows the xylophone, if you're familiar with that song. Now, I'm just clicking to highlight things and so you can see them, but um, again, I don't need to touch my computer for any of this to happen. Bank two is kind of generally strings. Um, we have a basic pad. I use the expression pedal to kind of adjust the volume. And if I tap it twice, I get my power strings. All right, we can make game show music. And if I tap it three times, I can layer in that lead sound. All right, bank three, uh, loosely labeled pads, but we got pad, just kind of a basic warm sweeping pad. Uh, double tap, we've got the matrix kind of power synth for. Lay all your love on me. And then we have a basic synth string pad um, for three taps. And bank four, I think I just have Whirly in here. Let's double check. Yeah, I haven't loaded anything else in there. Um, forget the name of that song, but that's the part. In bank five, one tap gives me this lead. Two taps gives me my Fernando flute. Fernando. Ah, what a song. And I have another lead for SOS in uh, three taps. Got a couple of bass sounds um, in bank six. Um, and in seven, I have organ. And I do have these faders mapped to be my draw bars. Now, I don't think there's really any organ in ABBA music. Um, I didn't notice any when I was learning these tunes, um, but it's just such a you know, valuable instrument to have. Um, 
you know, to kind of lift a section even if it's not in the original. Okay, so real quick, I've got an old janky MIDI keyboard here, so I gotta just kinda make my mod wheel chill out. I promise you it's the keyboard, not the software. Um, anyways, all right, so that's a quick rundown of the sounds that I'm using. That covers, I think, like 17 songs that we have in our set list. Um, I'm not playing any piano parts. There's an actual piano at the venue that we play at, um, and there's a pianist. So I'm just covering the aux key stuff. So I want to walk you through how easy it is to set this up. Once you find your sounds, obviously that's going to take some time, depending on what VSTs you have and you know how specific you're trying to get. Uh, but once you have all those saved and they're just you know loaded up as tracks, or maybe you have them saved as presets, uh, you just start with a blank track and and this is literally how I set this up. I drag on my ONTAP plugin, and then I drag on this blank bank, a blank bank. And first things first, I map my seven buttons here to seven buttons on my keyboard. Now you'll see that I have these labeled as notes. Um, not really necessary, doesn't really matter. Um, that has to do with mapping macro knobs, which is something I did in the past. So. It doesn't matter what if they're CCs or if they're notes, um, as long as they can send something, um, they can trigger this plugin. And then the next step is to just map bank to bank and taps to taps. And you'll see that those are grayed out now. And if I press six, or sorry, seven, I get bank seven, six, five, four, three. Now there's a slight delay because it's kind of waiting uh, about 200 milliseconds for you to tap a few times. So I can double tap. Voila, I get 2.2. .2. Double tap 4, I get 4.2. Triple tap, I get 4.3. See if I can squeeze 4 in there. Yep, 4.4. .4. So 4 is a little impractical. I find that like on a gig, I can think about tapping twice or thrice, but tapping force four times uh, is a little much for the head. So I usually, I usually max out at three taps. All right, so let's move along and drag in some sounds. I've got my ABBA track muted here, and I'm just gonna go in there and copy a couple things. So let's grab my DX7 layer. I put that in slot one. So bank one, slot one, paste. And if I tap once, we're getting sound. It's that easy. Now you'll see here I have this cutoff knob. So within this saved instrument rack, that's already mapped to the VSTs as needed. Um, but what I just need to do is quickly label this. And because this is a grouped instrument within, like nested inside a parent rack, there is this one extra step of labeling it again. Um, but I'll go ahead and map that to cutoff. And I'll map cutoff to control one. So we've mapped it all the way back to here. So control one now is controlling cutoff. And it's just passing through to every nested rack. All that's left to do is map control one to cutoff. And voila, I can control it on my keyboard. I don't really use control two, three, or four in this set, um, but generally I do like cutoff, um, and then I think I do attack and release, and then this is like a custom knob. Maybe it's portamento on certain patches, maybe it's you know a filter on others. It depends on your use case, that's why I left it um, kind of open-ended. So we could just quickly label this DX. Okay, let's grab patch number two. So that is gonna be the xylophone. Okay, in this case, it looks like I've got... Oh, right, because I layered the that little string layer for uh, Mamma Mia. But I'll just grab Xylophone to keep it simple. So we've got our Xylophone, and I think in theory... Let me just double check, chain. Yep, it's good. Um, if I double tap... Oh, there we go. We get our Xylophone sound. So one tap, DX, two taps, Xylophone. And so it's this easy. I'm just dragging patches into this framework and voila, it's as simple as that. And you just gotta label it real quick. Now I think this, yeah, this patch automatically responds to expression data. So I'm just moving my foot and I didn't have to map any, anything for that to happen. But that does relate to that 111 plugin I mentioned at the beginning. Um, if I mapped expression to anything, it wouldn't pass through to that plugin. You can check that out separately if you've had that issue, but I won't get into it now. And let's see, patch number three is the spooky synth. So we'll grab the spooky synth here. In this case, it's just a single instrument and we can just drag that right here into 1.3. 
And there it is. If I tap three times, I've got my spooky synth. DX, xylophone. Uh, whoops. And spooky synth. So what's next? Let's go to bank two. Strings. Ah, yes. So you'll see here that I have the volume of the strings, 2.1, mapped to expression. So I'll just go in here and grab my string rack. And paste it into, whoops, um, 2.1. So we haven't used 1.11 yet, but this would be the time since we want to map the expression pedal to something. So you can see that it's responding to my expression data. And we're just going to take that output and map it to exp, and voila. All that expression data is now passing through, and we can map it whenever we need it. So in this case, strings, we are just going to take the volume here of this right here and map it to expression. So now, when I move my expression pedal, I can fade in the strings. Now, I generally don't want the full range of negative infinity to 6, so... I go edit macro map and you know I might do something like negative 30 to like 3 because I don't want to risk clipping either. Strings are generally pretty safe, but yeah, so there you go. Um, you could just keep doing this with every patch and fill up your banks accordingly and literally it's all good to go. So anyways, that's kind of the gist, right? You just drag and drop your sounds into this framework um, for banks and patches and then it's just a matter of tapping them out you know and you can put your computer as far away as you want it it can be safe it can be locked up in a little box safe from any spilled beer or, you know crazy dancers and uh, you're good to go so I'm gonna stop there um, you know I demonstrated kind of the gist of it and you could just continue dragging and dropping whatever patches you need into whatever slots you want to put them in uh, but real quick I want to just talk about a few other things that you can do with this plugin so this rack here is called the all on bank by Able Toots. You'll see all on here. And what that means is that every VST is always on. So if I'm playing my DX, I can hold the sustain pedal. Actually, I'd first have to turn off the sustain kill button here. And then I can switch over to my strings and I can layer them. And then in theory, I could switch to xylophone. And I could play all those three sounds at once through a combination of sustain, holding the notes and then using my left hand to play the rest. But there might be cases where you're using some really demanding sounds or you want to just really conserve uh, CPU. I have a pretty powerful computer. I'm not worried about it for a gig like this. So I let them all just exist. That way, like there can be smooth transitions while holding the sustain and stuff like that. And they're not gonna cut off. But um, the sustain kill button um, means that, say I'm holding a patch. So let's uh, grab strings. As soon as I switch to a new patch, it's going to send a sustain off. Even though I'm still holding the sustain with my foot, um, now I'm on the DX7 patch, and the sustain of the strings was killed. So that sustain kill is included as a way to prevent any issues with hung MIDI. Um, I've had issues in the past, and so I just built that in there to say, like, look, there's no chance that if you switch to a different sound and come back to another one, you're going to get, like, a hung note all of a sudden, which maybe if you've experienced that before, you know how annoying that can be. Um, but this button here also just sends a sustain kill message. So what I usually do is I map my rack on and off to a button, a toggle button on my keyboard. And then I also map that to this. So that anytime I toggle the rack on and off, I'm sending a sustain kill message. And it's just a way of being doubly sure that nothing's going to hold over in any sort of situation. All right, so just a couple other features of this setup that I want to get into. Uh, you may have thought, well, you're not doing anything to conserve your CPU. All your plugins are on all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not using a lot of crazy stuff for this setup. So to me, that's fine. I have a pretty you know, modern computer. I've never had an issue with something like this. But I have a separate rack called on tap, on off, mapped. Check it out. It's the same thing. But if I just quickly set this up here, whichever bank and whichever instrument I have selected 
is already mapped to be on or off accordingly. So bank one, one tap, well, 1.1 1 .1 is on. If I tap one twice, you'll see that 1.1 .1 went off and 1.2 came on. If I tap it thrice, three times, uh, same deal, right? Now, if I go to bank two, all of one goes off and bank two is now on. So bank one, off, bank two, on, and all the rest are also off. All right, let me activate bank three. Bank three is on, 3.1 is on, but if I tap it twice, 3.1 is off, 3.2 is on, you get the idea. So all your VSTs are being turned off um, whenever they're not in use. Now this could be a little annoying for transitions. So what I would suggest is maybe for one song, you could use one bank, and that way you could have like your verse, your chorus, your bridge, uh, presets or whatever. And in that case, you could just remove um, these mappings. And then you could just, so I'll go to bank one so it's on. Um, just remove these mappings. Um, make sure they're on. And now, and now bank one, uh, it's on. Bank 1.2, bank 1.3, it's all on. But if I switch to bank two, then it's all off. You get the idea. So there's a lot of ways you can do this, uh, you know, according to how safe you want to be with CPU and all that stuff. Um, you know, whether you want every patch mapped or you just want banks mapped or if you want nothing mapped at all. So I'm going to wrap it up. My name is Devin. I play keys. I love Ableton. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and you can grab the ONTAP MIDI plugin um, as well as these uh, bank templates from my website, abletoots.com. Thanks for watching. Able to.